What if a Muslim was to say to you just now, my little girl cried more at her first haircut than when I cut off her clitoris? What would you think of me if I was to say such a disgusting thing that a person as humane as yourself can sit here and, be, and think of that as a fit subject for humor shows what I mean. Religion makes morally normal people say and do disgusting and wicked things, and you've just proved my point for me. One, uh, uh, the thing I do like about Judaism is something that you, that you haven't, in fact, chosen to stress, which is it, it does in some ways constitute, I would not say a partnership with God, but a willingness to rebel against him that's different from Christianity and Islam. I mean, there's the, <coughs> it's Rabbi Eliezer, I think, the debate, about, who's right about this question of the law, and he says, if I'm wrong, let the, you know the story, let the river flow backwards, let the, let the carob tree walk on its roots, let the roof of the temple fall in, and all these things happen. He still won't give up. He says, okay, if I'm wrong, let God say that I'm wrong. And God leans in and said, actually, you are wrong. You've been wrong all along. <laughs> And Rabbi Eliezer says, well, not even God can decide this because it's a matter of the law and of the majority in this meeting. And Elisha is supposed to have been asked later on, what did God think about all that? And he thought, well, it means the Jews are a bit more promising than some other uh, groups of people I know. <laughs> this is very nice, but don't you think it's a little bit anthropomorphic? Doesn't it suggest that we make God in our own image rather than the other way around? And wasn't that my point to begin with? Well, first... So what if God actually exists, sir? Would he not have been good to you? No. Uh, he wouldn't. Because if, if that were true, it would mean that I had an eternal supervising parent who would never die and let me get on with my life, never let me grow up, would keep me under surveillance. But you have, sir. I supervision every, every minute of my but, life but and, you constantly have. Asked, and constantly asked me to be thanking and praising him. Yeah. I well, think it would that be, wasn't part like, of the scenario. It would be like living in North Korea. I, I, I think it would be a horrible outcome. Well, not sure that, that, that God is Kim Jong-il, but what if what I said is well, true? Well, Kim Jong-il, he has a different opinion. No. Nietzsche, Nietzsche is supposed to have said God was dead. Freud is supposed to have said God was dad. Um, <laughs> in, the future, in the future of an illusion... His best essay on the subject, I think, he says that it's impossible to study religion without noticing its connection to wishful thinking. That people would like, as they expire, to think, I'm not going anywhere, I'm just going into the arms of a loving father. Yeah, who wouldn't like to believe that? Um, who here decides what they believe on the basis of their wish, though, may I inquire? Do, you, do any of you decide to believe things because they would console you? Um, what about a word like, we haven't, it hasn't come up yet in our discussion. Big, interesting, important word, begins with E, evidence. All the evidence is that the, the cosmos doesn't know we're here. That evolution doesn't know it's created us. That the stars don't look down on us. That there is no one who knows about or cares about or supervises our existence. That we have to face this on our own responsibility. That all the evidence is that way. There is no serious evidence any other way, but there is a strong desire that we could abolish and dissolve our responsibility and just relax and say, well, I'm so glad that as I check out, Daddy will be taking care of me. I've got some evidence. I don't think it's moral to be preaching that kind of thing. I'm sorry to say, and I think it's positively immoral to be preaching it to people who are ill, suffering, and defenseless. I think it's hateful to tell lies to people who are in that condition. What would you tell them? I would not encourage them to delude themselves. Oh, can I, and just, I, won't, I just want to say... And when my turn comes, I won't listen to any rubbish of that kind. I want you to... Oh, go ahead. I could not possibly be more serious about you. Is it not the case that the spread of Christianity, about which you spoke so warmly and affectingly in your opening remarks, attributing it to... It's in the innate truth of the Bible story uh, was spread by that means or because the Emperor Constantine decided to make Christianity the official religion of the Roman Empire? Which, in your view, contributed more to the spread of the faith? Uh, the Holy Spirit. I rest my case. Well, I, I want to make it clear in our closing moments here, Christopher. I don't consider you an enemy. I don't consider you 
Um, but I'm very sorry to hear that. Well, I know, because you want me to be your enemy. And you're well, you want, no, you, excuse me, you are my enemy. Well, but you're not my enemy. Uh, I, I, how you can figure that? No, because I don't feel a need to have to silence Christopher Hitchens. Well, it, you don't have a chance of doing that. I don't mean that at all, but I mean your, your, your preachments are evil, and they're a direct threat to the survival of civilization. So you, if you don't consider me an enemy, you don't know an enemy when you see or hear one. It is a horrible idea that there is somebody who owns us, who makes us, who supervises us, waking and sleeping, who knows our thoughts, who can convict us of thought crime, who can do thought crime just for what we think, uh, who can judge us while we sleep for things that might occur to us in our dreams, who can create us sick, as apparently we are, and then order us on pain of eternal torture to be well again. Th to demand this, to wish this to be true, is to wish to live as an abject slave. You give me the awful impression, of, I hate to have to say it, of someone who hasn't read any of the arguments against your position ever. Don't say, look, you, what, here's, do, yourself okay. and your, do yourself and your faith the honor of saying it's faith. Don't no, 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 say no, no, no. science-based. The argument you would be... You won't get away with it. Look, the argument would be, Christopher, is that if the universe exploded into being out of nothing, then miracles are possible because the greatest miracle of all has already occurred. The question is, have miracles occurred in the first century? No, miracle, that requires another debate whereby we have to look at the historical evidence and see. And if it is true that, the, uh, that Jesus really did come and say and do the things that the New Testament writer said he did, then whatever he teaches is true because if he rose from the dead, he was God. If he taught that there will be an intervention, then there will be. That's the argument. I don't have time to support it. Now, um, a, a sentence or two from David Hume on miracles would, would clear all this up. You, you'll need it. Okay. Uh, uh, it's fallen off. Right. So. That's one of them. Right. A sentence or two from David Hume would, would correct what you said. A, a miracle is defined not as a part of the natural order, but as a suspension of the natural no, order. No, an you intervention. Can't, you, can't not say, a you can't say of, a, of the Big Bang, which is the foundation of the natural order, that it's a suspension of what it starts. You may not do that. However, if you meet someone in the street who you yesterday saw executed, you can say either that an extraordinary miracle has occurred or that you are under a very grave misapprehension. And David Hume's logic on this, I think, is quite irrefutable. He says, what is more likely, that the laws of nature have been suspended in your favor and in a way that you approve, or that you've made a mistake? And in each case you must, and especially if you didn't see it yourself and you're hearing it from someone who says that they did. But I would go further and say the following. I'll grant you that it would be possible to track the pregnancy of the woman Mary, who's mentioned about three times in the Bible, uh, and to show that there was no male intervention in her life at all. But yet she delivered herself of a healthy baby boy. I can say, I, I don't say that's impossible. Parthenogenesis is not completely unthinkable, but it does not prove that his paternity is divine. And it wouldn't prove that any of his moral teachings were thereby correct. Nor, if I was to see him executed one day and see him walking the streets the next, would that show that his father was God, or his mother was a virgin, or that his teachings were true? Especially given the commonplace nature of resurrection at that time and place. After all, Lazarus was raised, never said a word about it. The daughter of Jairus was raised, didn't say a thing about what she'd been through. Um, and the Gospels tell us that at the time of the crucifixion, all the graves in Jerusalem opened, and their occupants wandered around the streets to greet. Uh, so that it seems the resurrection was a, a, a something of a banality at the time. Not all, <laughs> not all of those people clearly were divinely uh, conceived. So I'll, I'll give you all the miracles, and you'll still be left exactly where you are now, holding an empty sack. Look, you've made the worst concession already. You've already said you're a slave. So well, absolutely. Uh, after I, that, I, after I, that, mere, mere obedience to orders is a, is a small offense. I readily admit that I'm a slave. I'm a slave of, uh, of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm glad of your chains. Yeah, well... Uh, it's absolutely fine for you, but you must leave me out of it. I don't want to be told that I have to obey these laws, too, or that my children have to be taught this in school, or that laws have to be written to ratify the, the bizarre beliefs of a cult like yours. Well, but... That's the 